Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and more specifically, welcome to the Armoury. This is where all weapons from Halo Law will be featured and analysed in detail. And in this episode, we look at the Shock Rifle. Let's begin. The Shock Rifle, also known as the SICAT Workshop Vault Piercer, is a directed energy sniper rifle designed and developed by the Banished. Due to the somewhat nomad-come-pirate-privateer mercenary style of operation of the Banished, the Shock Rifle alongside many other recently fielded Banished weapons were developed aboard ships or remote Banished outposts rather than a dedicated armory or arms manufacturer. The Shock Rifle specifically was developed aboard the Banished Dreadnought Ghost of Barillon, being the most recent functional example of a range of experimental voltaic directed energy weapons derived from the remnants of the Jurulhane technological knowledge left over from the nuclear civil war that ravaged the Jurulhane homeworld of Doisak pre-integration into the Covenant. The weapon features some unmistakably Jurulhane design features, but also differs from previously seen brute weaponry in some important ways. The barrel is covered partially by a shroud that splits into three sections with each burst from the weapon. Just behind the barrel sits a sight that also provides optical magnification for the user to serve its function as a sniper rifle, and behind this rests the top-mounted battery pack. More specifically, although it was designed by the SICAT workshop, it was eventually manufactured by the Armory of Reckoning. The shock rifle was designed for the larger body and paw size of Jurulhane warriors, so needless to say the weapon has massive proportions, which also serves to warn eagle-eyed infantry on the battlefield of its presence due to the prominent profile and oversized rear grip. It measures 147.8 centimeters or 58.2 inches in length, 55 centimeters or 21.6 inches in height with a currently unknown mass. The weapon features a Jurulhane sized grip with a currently unclear trigger group or firing mechanism. Underslung to the barrel is a protruding metal guard rail, seemingly to provide some distance between the user's hand and the electromagnetically charged barrel, and likely also acts as a grounding rail to redirect any discharge from the weapon safely away from the user and back into a dissipation system within the weapon itself. Beneath this is a foregrip at the head of a bayonet attachment with a 75cm or 29.5 inch curved blade looking somewhat like a kopesh in shape. The sights of the weapon enable a smart scope like optical scope, however it is unclear precisely how this operates with Jurulhane armour systems, as it isn't immediately known if the Jurulhane have an integrated heads up display as the likes of Spartans and Elites do. Indeed it isn't even clear if the Brute's helmets feature scoping systems similar to the Kigyar, which may explain why the weapon is often seen being wielded by Jurulhane firing from the hip, rather than shouldering the weapon and firing as a rifle should be. It may be that the Jurulhane have created an optical scope system that creates an optical zoom via a holographic scope that is projected from the upper surface of the rifle, thereby facilitating the scope feature of the rifle without a need to connect to the weapon for a heads-up display smart scope connection. But again, this remains unclear. The shock rifle fires electromagnetically guided plasma in a 12 volt per battery pack configuration. The experimental nature of this weapon means that it isn't precisely clear of the method of firing, but the overall function has some similarities to energy projectors found on Covenant ships and the Covenant beam rifle, but there are also some notable differences. Energy projectors employ the use of gravitic impellers and magnetic lensing to accelerate focus and direct beams of high intensity plasma. When preparing to fire, the energy projectors employ targeting vanes that iris into position around a magnetized muzzle, ready to direct the plasma they fire. In the shock rifle's case, it appears that the medium that is fired isn't necessarily a plasma in the conventional sense, but more likely a discharge of electrons, as the characteristics of the beam don't scream directed plasma to me, and more so a laser-like discharge of electricity. 
how this quote unquote electro laser operates, however, is utterly unknown, but I do have some thoughts on this. Electrons, while they have mass, the mass isn't significant enough to impart the effects witnessed by its operation, which leads me to hypothesize that the weapon makes use of heavy fermion material as its reaction mass. Electrons are one type of fermion, and when they are found in such materials, they are sometimes referred to as heavy electrons. The name heavy fermion comes from the fact that the fermion behaves as if it has an effective mass greater than its rest mass. In the case of electrons in these metallic compounds, they have an effective mass up to a thousand times the free particle mass. It is hypothetically possible that the battery pack contains a charge for the electromagnetic guidance mechanism and a source of this exotic heavy fermion material as a source of the electrical discharge projectile beam we witness, meaning the weapon actually runs out of ammo when the charge needed to keep the electromagnetic guidance systems operational runs out, and less so that the heavy fermion material exhausts its supply of heavy electrons. But again, this is just hypothetical, and I will revise this if further information is provided at a later date. From here, the weapon would simply harvest these heavy electrons from this material and guide them into the electromagnetic guidance system to be fired down the barrel of the weapon. When used against Mjolnir Gen 3 armor, shock rifles are capable of knocking out the integrated systems inside the helmet, including playing havoc with the integrated night vision device, heads up display, energy shielding, smart link, and even magnetic weapon mounts. If the shock rifle is fired on a target with others tightly gathered around it, electricity can arc between the targets, dealing damage to each of them. If the user expends the ammunition, the weapon's massive bayonet attachment can still be used in close quarters combat, and in theory, it could even be wielded like an axe. The weapon is not without its disadvantages, however. If the weapon is used in close proximity to a target and the user is unable to kill the target with well-placed headshots or body shots, the attritional damage that comes from the electrical discharge to the target may not actually be sufficiently fast enough to prevent the target from closing on the user and killing them in retaliation before the weapon's effects finally put the target down. As the weapon is still experimental, it hasn't been fielded in great quantities, meaning that coming across ammunition for the weapon is decidedly more rare than other weapons, meaning if the user does so happen to expend the ammunition's battery, it is often a better choice to ditch the weapon entirely for practically any other weapon freely available on the battlefield. Better to have a weapon that you can actually fire and use to defend yourself than an unnecessary paperweight with a sharpened edge. And with that, that more or less rounds out all we know about the shock rifle at present. Of course, if new information becomes available about the shock rifle in due course, I will release new videos to update the information that we currently know. That being said, do you think it's likely the firing mechanism and the ammunition do actually use this exotic heavy fermion material as the source of the electron reaction mass? And what weapon would you like me to cover next on the armory? You know where to leave your comments, and until next time, thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. I just want to give a quick shout out to my patrons and YouTube members Spartan10148, my Metarch, Dylan, FalconX003, Kenwood, Irrefutable Justice, Leon, Neek, and Ramiz, my monitors, Alvin, Andrew, Brand, Brian, Cameron, Chris, Darian, Devon, Flaming Halo, Greenblood, Kyle, Legions Lost, Michael, Prophet Bear, Spartan and Wolf, my sub-monitors, my fleet of Strato Sentinels, my diligent enforcers, and all the other awesome people that have jumped aboard to support the channel over at Patreon. Another shout out to Todd Morrison, my transcendent YouTube member. And just one quick reminder to support us on all major social media channels, including Discord. Much love from Zero Zero. Take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain.